dust can no longer be distinguished from new smoke. But family connection and interdependence remain visible. As the time flows, family members meet and part, making meals that for centuries remain impressive to tongues and outstanding in history. But in Macau, the hand of history is felt or tasted most strongly in the city's dominant passion, its love and craving for fine food. Here, in this melting part of peoples and cultures, customs and diets have fused, resulting in an all-inclusive cooking style. Could there be a market anywhere in the world as boisterous as the one that awakens this city every morning? None for me today. I'm not opening until the second. For Manuel, a Portuguese who's lived in Macau for 40 years, speaking Cantonese has long been essential to his daily life. <laughs> Meanwhile, Angela Claudia Rodriguez is driving through the traffic on her way to work. Do I need to look a certain way? It's okay, just act natural. Okay. Genetically, I'm more Chinese than Portuguese. I guess you can say I'm Macanese. Even those forged by the vicissitudes of history find a place to settle down in the end. Here, for over four centuries, generations of Macanese have been born and raised. As well as establishing time-honored businesses, they've introduced Portuguese traditions into Macau's food culture. <laughs> Are they all this big? They're all this big? Buy some. They're all good. In 1979, Manuel moved to Macau and opened his Portuguese restaurant. His manager and sous chef is his wife, Tong Lai Ha, from Zhuhai Guangdong. When we got married, I didn't even know how to cook. And he said to me, I thought you were Chinese. How come you can't cook? So I learned just to show him. He wouldn't teach me, so I taught myself by watching him. You know, it's a happy marriage when a couple's conversation centers around fine food. Portuguese-style squid is served at many restaurants, but the cooking methods they use vary. The Portuguese are fond of pork, and being a coastal nation in southwest Europe, it's only natural. They enjoy the combination of pork and seafood. Manuel is preparing a stuffing with squid tentacles, Portuguese sausage, and minced meat, seasoned by red chili powder, black pepper, and white wine. In traditional Portuguese cooking, onions, bell peppers, and tomato sauces feature prominently. According to Manuel, stuffed squid has to be slow cooked. He likes to go slow and I don't. He cooks super patiently. While I always want things done fast, so we fight every single day. Oh yeah? We fight every day. Over the years, 
the go fast, go slow pace of work has synergized into a stable work-life balance. First, we cook the onion. Portuguese and Macanese cooking are different. We use lots of ingredients, the essential ones being onion, olive oil, and white wine. White wine adds a fruitiness to the broth. While the stuffed squid is a flavor sensation, the penetrating flavor of salty sour sauce on the outside is giving way to delicious freshness inside. It's a dish that has all the warmth and vitality of a Mediterranean breeze. Having finished the day's work, Angela hurries home. She has an appointment with her mother. Don't move your hand like that. Like this? I'm so afraid that you might hurt yourself. Now you do it. From here, better keep your hand away. Angela's father is 3-4 Portuguese, while her mother is a native of Fujian. In local Macanese families like this, a special recipe has been passed down for generations. A homemade dish replete with the history of this place, as well as delicious ingredients. Throw in some more of it, yeah. Now put the chicken in the wok before the onion's overcooked. The curcuma powder, a flavor and color enhancer originally from India, came to Macau during the Age of Discovery, along with many other spices. The use of coconut milk in Macanese cooking was introduced by the Portuguese in the 16th century. Coconut milk soon usurped hard to come by dairy milk as a dominant ingredient in Macanese cooking. Okay, bring me the potato. Sausage, onion, and chicken, too. Traditional commodities like Portuguese sausages and black olives have long played an essential role in Macau cuisine. Just a few pinches of shredded coconut enriches texture and infuses the dish with the exotic charm of Southeast Asia. As is usual in Portuguese cooking, the coconut shreds are baked until slightly scorched. The finishing touch to a gourmet treat from half a world away. Portuguese style chicken, one of Macau's best known dishes. Not authentically Portuguese per se. This is a homegrown treat that brilliantly brings two cultures together. Is it salty enough? It sure is. But others in Macau choose to stick to authentic Portuguese cuisine. Tonight's a special occasion, so Manuel's offering a spectacular for his main course, roast suckling pig. Marinate it first, together with those. Not too much. This delicacy turns out to be another cultural exchange and between East and West. The Portuguese roast suckling pig tastes salty and spicy. Unlike the Chinese version, which is somewhat sweet. The Portuguese and Cantonese versions of the roast pig are like two acquaintances who've walked past one another so many times that it's now hard to say who influenced whom. In the Portuguese version, the entire pig is marinated from the inside out. While in the Cantonese version, only the inside is marinated and the skin is crispy. The Portuguese version is baked in an oven, whereas the Cantonese one 
requires a much more complicated procedure, where honey, water, and red vinegar are used to toughen the skin in preparation for a shower of flame. An open flame renders the skin crispy, giving it a distinctive sesame-like roasted and toasted taste. Different experiences, different results. The Cantonese roast pig with all its fancy tricks has come a long way from its homely origins. Thanks to tasty, crispy skin, it is now one of global cuisine's pork crown jewels. Meanwhile, the Portuguese roast pig has retained its original modest flavor. Easily achievable at home or in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Customers choose the roast suckling pig for happy occasions. Like the birth of a new baby. Another popular dish is pig's trotters cooked with beans. Guests at this party may have distinct looks of their respective races or bear marks of two worlds crossing paths. But the difference in culture or language no longer keeps them apart. They are united in their common passion for fine food. The last course on the menu takes only two minutes to prepare. A classic soup made of red pepper, minced garlic, and white wine is used to cook fresh clams. With a touch of sharpness squeezed from lemon. Once these fragrant wine-infused clams are served, this cross-cultural party really starts to swing. To good health, cheers. Thank you, everybody. I was blown away by her beauty at first sight. So I asked her if she would go out with me. They all love Portuguese food and I Cantonese. He loves Cantonese too. He eats everything now. But he insists on buying the food himself instead of having it delivered. Now, is he stubborn or not? In the symphony of time, the romantic encounter is the defining court. that encounter having lasted for centuries has left us with the most splendid culture as well as the earliest fusion cuisine in China. Macanese food. Every morning, Lam Kong Plong drives to the market. Honoring a century-long tradition for restaurant owners, purchasing everything himself. My grandfather opened this restaurant in 1918. That was over a hundred years ago. Almost every Portuguese person in Macau knows this place. Lam Kong Plong's confidence comes from the restaurant's long history and a recipe that never changed. Chilies pickled in vinegar, their trademark appetizer, is made by marinating green chilies in salt and white vinegar. Though made using a simple procedure involving little or no technique, they've been around unchanged for 300 years and are only available in old restaurants like this. 
Lam Kok Lon's restaurant witnessed the coming into being of Macanese food. Please lead this guest to the lady at table 10. And uncommonly, it sells wine by the glass. <laughs> I've been coming here for 27 years, from 1993 to this day. I first heard about this place six years ago. It serves traditional Portuguese food. It serves traditional Portuguese food. This is him, right? He's been coming here since he was a teenager. Customers include Portuguese, people of mixed races, and government employees. Tourists from the mainland, too, have been dining at my restaurant since Macau's African chicken, the quintessence of Macau's spicy food, can be found on the menu of almost every restaurant here. The African chicken is spicy by design, chilies being the essential ingredient. I use at least three kinds of chili. Hot pepper is indispensable, for it provides a spicy and savory kick. Hot oil draws out the strong flavor from within the chilies. When cooking African chicken, the marinade is everything. Chili is being the core of the dish. Just as Portuguese-style chicken isn't exactly from Portugal, neither is this dish authentically African. Instead, it is the product of the spices brought by trade and their gradual incorporation into cooking. The end result is a hot, tasty treat exclusive to Macau. Veteran cooks like 67-year-old Ang Peng Chun are key to passing on Macau's gourmet heritage. Every day he's first to enter the kitchen. His day's work begins with a prayer to the kitchen god. The only thing irreplaceable in this kitchen is
universally popular flavor. Unlike the big restaurants, Lam Kok Lon's place is more down to earth. Years ago, he even convinced his brother to join the team. We work together for the sake of making a living. We're both interested to start with. Plus, we need to make money. And strengthening the family bond is an added bonus. Since then, with his brother running the business, Lam Kok Lon has been able to focus on cooking, perfecting his already adept skills. Red wine braised oxtail stew is a classic dish known to everyone in Macau, and you could find it in almost all restaurants. Based on the original European version, and marinated along with ingredients and spices common in Western cuisine, as well as authentic Portuguese red wine. The oxtail is then pan-fried in olive oil to keep the beef fresh. But rather than baking it, people here braise it. The result of this simplified procedure is delicious melt-in-the-mouth oxtail. Compared to what's served in the fancy restaurants, Lam Kok Lon's version appears more humble sometimes with cabbage featuring in the stew. For over 100 years, this small diner has played its modest role as an essential part of neighborhood life. Go check if the fish is done. Don't stay idle. It's not. I've just put it in. The younger generation won't take over and I can't do it forever. It'll close in two to three years at tops. It'd be a shame because business is good. I have to give it up some time. This is how the world works. Come here often if you like the food. Goodbye, they say, is one of the hardest words to say, especially in a tiny place like Macau. The end of a century-old tradition. Maybe a serious issue, but it never bothers Lam Kok Lon. Keeping the business going while he still can means everything to him. Elsewhere in Macau, other restaurants choose a different path. From Lam Kok Lon's adherence to Portuguese tradition, with a more adaptive and inclusive approach, they are attracting more and more tourists. There are plenty of Chinese elements. We serve Portuguese food, but also Chinese. Milk tea and coffee are popular among locals, especially at breakfast time. Minchi pork rice is something everyone in Macau is familiar with. The Cantonese word minchi is derived from the English word minced. Together with other local specialties, it's heading into an era of fast-paced life. Things change so fast that even the older generation are altering their lifestyles. At 74, Francisco Javier keeps a schedule, busier than his juniors. The last thing he wants is to be left behind. A good chef must keep renewing the menu. Customers lose interest. If they end up having the same food, eight times out of 10, Xavier's restaurant is frequented by his fans. Before the handover of Macau in 1999, he had served six governors in succession. Since I left my job in the government headquarters, I had to adapt to the restaurant's style and the changes in people's tastes. 
Portuguese food today is different from what it used to be. Xavier is known for being one of the most innovative of his generation of Macau chefs, combining traditional Portuguese food and Chinese cuisine has been an eye-opening experience for him. This morning, in search of culinary inspiration, Xavier decides to visit an old friend. His name is Lu Lam Lim, owner of a time on a dessert shop in Macau. How did you make it, with or without rice? Without. We used to make almond milk by stewing. The coconut milk can be used on cakes and other desserts to enrich flavor. All right, brother, now you try this sugar-free almond milk. It would make for a good soup recipe. Wow, this is so good. Inspired by the desserts, Xavier plans to reinvent a classic Portuguese dessert using sugar-free almond milk. Whereas traditional Portuguese sweet rice is made using massive quantities of milk, Xavier wants to substitute almond milk, thereby neutralizing the fatness and transforming the flavor. The rice tastes different after adding the sugar-free almond milk. The almond provides a nutty fragrance that soothes your throat. Butter, sugar, and yolk together contribute to the exquisite texture. With less milk, the sweetness becomes gentler. Whereas the almond enhances the rice's taste, adding a Chinese element while keeping the essence of the original. You can't cook Portuguese food without olive oil, garlic, onion, tomato, sausage, and black olives. Bacalhau being the fish of choice. It's a significant part of Portuguese cuisine. And no true Portuguese restaurant can be without it. Bacalhau, one of Portugal's most beloved dishes. Made with salted black cod from the Arctic Ocean. Allegedly, it was an invention of Portuguese sailors. It requires huge amounts of salt, since it's not simply left to dry, making it much saltier than Chinese salted fish. The thicker pieces need to be soaked for three days. Two in water, one in fresh milk, rendering the meat all moist and tasty. The bacalao, now softened from the soaking, is as juicy as fresh meat, with salt penetrating each of its fibers. This naturally flavored special treat has played an active role in Macau cuisine for centuries. Pan fry, deep fry, bake, roast, braise, stuff. To name a few of the hundreds of ways to cook bacalao. Even today, some veteran Macau cooks still use the time-honored methods of tenderizing the flesh of the fish by giving it a good beating. Bacalao balls, a homegrown Macau snack, as renowned as the egg tart. Brother, dog. 
Hi, Sid. I'm fine with anything you offer. Great, I'm making bacalao tongues today. Wonderful. That'd take many fish to make. Yeah, since each fish has only one tongue. As one time sous chef in the governor's kitchen, Xavier has access to cod tongue, the holy grail of seafood cuisine. It is the rarest part of bacalao. Hard to find even in its country of origin. Soaking it in icy water will neutralize the saltiness as well as firm up the meat. There are no references for cooking bacalao. In the making of this Macau delicacy, Xavier relies solely on his knowledge of Portuguese cuisine with a touch of Chinese thinking. Red chili paste and other ingredients. London advertising, peacock sweetness, while white wine and fish soup intensify the Portuguese flavor. For centuries, Macau has seen countless individuals fascinated by the merging of two very different culinary traditions, the Portuguese and the Chinese, it is then that laid down the foundations of the city's culinary tradition. But Macau has so much more to offer than Macanese dishes. One year ago, Wang Poilan started getting around in a wheelchair. Turn here. Every morning, her son wheels her through the old alleyways to their own restaurant. I was a born in Myanmar and returned to Macau in 1971 with my three children. Selling rice noodles and fish soup was how I made a living. I did it from a roadside cart. Between the 1960s and 1970s, a great number of overseas Chinese in Southeast Asia returned to settle in Macau, bringing with them various food cultures. It gave Macau's local cuisine a distinct Southeast Asian flavor. Fairly affordable, they soon grew popular, mostly served in little shops, hidden away inside streets. My rice noodle business got better and better, and I was happy. Hard work always pays off. That's the spirit of the bull. Now, in her 80s, Wong Pui Lan has handed over the restaurant to her son. The noodle soup can be cooked with many different types of fish, but for traditional Myanmar soup, we must use the catfish. Other fish, like the big ones, have a fishy smell, but not catfish. Cooking noodle soup with catfish has been Wang Puilan's secret recipe since her days as a street vendor. Boil it for half an hour, long enough to ensure the meat is cooked through, but short enough to prevent the flesh from disintegrating. Clarius fuscas also known by many other names, including yellow catfish. A spoon is all it takes to scoop out its meat. Spices are the soul of Southeast Asian cooking. Curcuma powder from India and fish curry powder from Thailand are thrown into the oil to bring out their strong flavors. In order to enrich the soup, rice powder is added. Stirred hundreds of times and poked and prodded, the flesh eventually turns into floss. The most important ingredient of the noodle soup putting the floss into the soup. 
along with some lemongrass, completes this exotic Southeast Asian treat. You can't make the fish soup rice noodles without banana pith. That's a Myanmar thing. Banana pith, delicate core of the plant, is a common ingredient in tropical countries of Southeast Asia. Why banana pith? Probably because people there barely had anything to eat in the past. So they fed themselves with whatever they could get. It's what makes the dish special. No pith, no fish soup rice noodles. After being cooked together for three hours, the ingredients have long been inseparable. A tasty fish. Refreshing spices and slightly sweet banana pith make for a rich taste. Along with the chewy rice noodles, this street food has more to offer than it seems. Novelty and exotic taste made Southeast Asian food an immediate hit in Macau. Soy Bryant intestine may sound Chinese, but it has a distinct Myanmar flavor, thanks to the use of cinnamon leaves and lemongrass from that country. Besides the fish soup, rice noodles, Wang Pui Lan's restaurant has one more signature product, Like my mother, I knew how to cook the noodle soup in Belashan, which brought just as much business. It's called Abizo in Myanmar. I changed it to Belachan. Whether that's really how it got its name or not, the popularity of Belachan is undeniable. It is, in fact, a spicy shrimp paste from Myanmar. This onion is what makes our Bella Chan taste so good. It contains much less water, so it's easier to dehydrate by deep frying. Plus, it has a unique scent. When making Bella Chan, every ingredient has to be handled with care. Garlic and onion are deep fried to lay out crispy and flavorful. And the most essential part is dry shrimp. Accompanied by Wang Pui Lan's secret recipe, chili oil. People here aren't big fans of spicy food. So we tuned it down, a notch to cater to Chinese tastes. All right, mother, have a taste of this. Slowly. It's good. It turned out well this time. Okay. So no problem? No problem. The final step is mixing the three ingredients together. A job for two. Lei Lo Wa used to help his mother when he was a child. And now, it's the other way around. I've been assisting my mother for decades. We moved here from Myanmar when I was seven, and I was already helping with our cold drink stand. I secretly learned cooking by myself and found it fulfilling. Be it in kitchens or in life, being there for your loved ones, it's always the best. It's all because of my mother. I see her every day. It's destiny, really. I've been grateful for all these years. Satisfied, too.
bustling morning in Macau. Every day at this hour, Sari Xiong Mixe walks through three or four markets, purchasing authentic food from Thailand, his home country. My mother was among the first Thai immigrants to Macau. I started helping with the restaurant business at a very young age. It wasn't a restaurant, actually. Just selling some homemade food. My aunt and my mom cooked, and I helped them. Customers placed orders by phone, and I packed up and delivered. Growing up in such an environment, Sari became an expert on Thai food. As a Macau citizen with Thai heritage, he has made promoting Thai food his speciality. Sari has the luxury of owning a private studio in Macau, where cost of land is extravagant. In here, he works to innovate Thai food with three cooks from Thailand. Do we use up all the green coconuts? Yeah. How about fresh shrimps? They'll work. Then we go with Spanish red prawn. Macau has a long tradition of appreciating Thai food. Many chefs from Thailand have made a name for themselves in the city. I have worked in Macau for 10 years already. We use the Thai herbs from the Thailand that we cook for Thai curry. Chef Prompak insists on using fresh spices imported from Thailand when cooking curry. Baked coriander seeds with their dominant scent are mixed with a myriad of other spices to create the base flavor of Thai curry. And then for the sauce, the culture there is like very, very strong, spicy. The more spicy, when they cook the curry. Whether it's the red curry made with red chili or green curry with green chili and basil, Chef Prompak can recreate their very flavors before combining them with local ingredients in Macau to provide customers with an authentic taste of Thailand. Unlike Chef Prompak, who's obsessed with curry, Sari's job seems more relaxing. Seeking fine food has always been his biggest hobby. It started at a very young age. You can tell by my size. Scattered across the city are restaurants with respect to specialties, most of which only serve patrons. Every gourmet here has their own gastronomic map of the city. Be it a hot pot or a humble restaurant, or an exquisite French feast. Sari loves them all and finds in them inspiration for his own creations. Having done his due diligence, Sari has given himself a whole new challenge. Thai-style royal dishes. Luckily, recipes for those dishes were kept to this day. Written down by actual royal chefs back in the day. So we can read those and follow the instructions. Over 20 royal Thai dishes are found in historical records. Using availability of materials and ingredients in Macau as the criteria, he narrows it down to four, plus one main course served in magnificent silver. The main course is made from fresh lobster from South America. Before cooking it, great effort is put into preparing the authentic Thai sauce. Freshness is an absolute must. The lemon leaf is used to moderate the spiciness. And along with green mango slices, creates a refreshing flavor. Sea prawns are fine just by themselves. 
but for this dish, they mash to embellish texture and color. Cooking royal dishes is a time-consuming task that demands great effort. The techniques are quite sophisticated. As complicated as it is to prepare, the lobster is surprisingly simple to cook. Such is Sari's understanding of his royal Thai cuisine. It represents not only the highest level of Thai food, but also the adaptability of Macau culture. Every time I come up with something new, I feel satisfied and, and it's fun too. I resent boredom and cooking the same dishes over and over again. I'm strongly against that. As time goes by, Macanese food has become part of the city's culture as well as an inspiration for many. <laughs> Here in this private kitchen, a taste exclusive to Macau is in the making. When the salty shrimp sauce joins forces with whiskey, the result is a truly unique flavor. The Cantonese sauce is lumpy whereas the Macau version is mostly liquid. For we soak the shrimps in liquor. This is the salty shrimp sauce. For Nita and indigenous Macanese, Macanese food is part of her culture that cannot be forgotten. By sharing it, the culture is kept alive. Of course, I have high hopes for Macanese food. I want everyone visiting Macau to have the opportunity to experience this authentic local flavor. Memories may fade, but the wonderful things in life, however trivial they may seem, the gourmet tradition of Macau looks set to prosper even more, always leave their traces behind. As the city becomes more open and inclusive, Maybe a new classic made in Macau flavor is waiting. Just around the corner to be discovered.